Preparing to delve in three, two, one. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Delve. My name is Nathan. And I am Alex. Alex, do you want to be the heroes of the story today? I want to be the very best like no one ever was. Well, good news, because on today's episode, we get to talk about being the good party. That's right. What happens when your party decides that they want to be the heroes and do the good and just thing, which I imagine is pretty much most campaigns, actually. It's the greatest of campaigns. Uh, So this is actually going to be part one of a little two-parter that we do uh, where we discuss uh, what happens when your party is going down essentially the path of the lights or the path of the dark. The good and the bad. But before we go into a darker place, we need to talk about what happens when you decide that you're going to just help the poor denizens of your world and try to be the generally good party. Yeah, we are, we are imagining that we are the, the just nice league or whatever you want to call it. Um, we're, we're the good guys. The just ice league? No, no, nice, just nice. Oh, no, that would just bring an ice that's, everywhere to cool, that's, no, cool we're not, things off. We're not, we're not bringing ice anywhere. We're not doing that to just cool everybody off. We need to bring ice to places to cool off people, people's hot yes. heads. Yes. <laughs> okay. 100%. Uh, okay, great. Uh, no, so what, what happens when we're, uh, when we're the good party? So let's just start with the obvious question. What does the light side party essentially uh, do and why? What are some examples that you would give right up on the uh, a bat of what the nice party would do to help? Oh, out? Uh, protecting the homeless. Okay, great. And maybe you maybe you just give money of yourself. Give money to orphanages. You give the money to the orphanages, and you don't expect anything in return. You're nothing but paladins. You are nothing but paladins. <laughs> yeah. I... Please, please do not have a party of only paladins unless they are all different deities uh because that is hilarious that 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 would be good i think it's actually worth noting that there are you know some classes that are typically considered to be good noble classes the heroes of the story you mentioned paladins paladins uh uh, clerics i want to say not all clerics obviously there's a lot of great clerics walking around these days um (laughs) You see them on the street. And when war clerics. Just ch- just going around the street doing that thing. M- monks are generally seen as probably, you know, good guys. They're uh, usually, as far as, like, if you're going classes. Uh, like, I, as somebody who's played some monks, they're usually referred to as, as neutral characters generally. I think it's because of the whole balance in the universe thing that they do. Yeah, probably. But yeah, I I do find myself usually taking the path. But the thing is, is that I feel like regardless of who you're even pick, even if you're picking a class that's typically like evil, so to speak, like necromancer. Exactly. And like, look, I would love to play a necromancer, but I probably wouldn't be, you know, all out evil in it. I probably would still try to do the nice thing um, by default. Is 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 uh, is something that I I tried to do. Maybe I use my skeletons to do a nice like jig or a dance to cheer up the crowd. Entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> Your multi-class necromancer bard. Yeah. <laughs> the necro bard. <laughs> that's, that's Bardomancer. Gonna... The bardomancer. I, so had... I just resurrect bards. <laughs> yes. Okay. I had used the pile of dead bards yes. as a cover. Um, if oh, you get that boy. reference, you're a plus. Um, but I had a, a character once that was a necromancy specialist wizard, uh, multi-class into bar, uh, druid. And their shtick oh. was that they were neutral, but they, um, were keeping the balance of life and death. When you get to that point, though, out of curiosity, can you resurrect animals? I mean, why not, if you want to. Here, here's another question, too. On that note, though, uh, when we say the light side, when they say when they do the right thing, are we also intoning the fact that the quote unquote right thing to a lot of people might be the selfless 
thing? I think that that's probably, yeah, I was going to try touching on that, is it, the, the idea that essentially what you're doing is not going to necessarily give you any uh, gains that are obvious. Yeah, it's to... not, it's the opposite of this are the characters that are seen as bad or evil. Um, but generally, a lot of those cases, it would probably be seen as self-serving and in one's self -in Right. So we're talking about things that are essentially selfless, done for others, essentially. Um, feeding Alex. Feeding is Alex selfless. Is selfless. I, I usually and, feed myself. Uh, unless you are Alex. If you're anybody then else. Then it's self-serving. <laughs> yes, ex exactly. It's it's evil to eat. Uh, but you, you, serve, you serve Alex, and then that's a selfless option. That's essentially the good option to, to take. Um, so the, the why part of this, I, I think that's probably a, a bigger conversation we're going to get to as we go through this. Um, but, uh, that leads me to a, a question though, that I, I've always thought about myself, which is, is the good path forced on parties? Is uh, it, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Like, are they, are you made by the quests you're doing or just like the conventions of games? That it always feels like when you get into a campaign, the default is, well, you're going to go and help these people and there, there's not a ton of wiggle room. It feels like you are guided toward the path of being the good guy, so to speak. I think in a lot of cases that can definitely be the case, um, where... Your party is generally, oh, your quest is to go do X, Y, and Z. And it's not really a morally gray quest as much as it's you, we want you to like save the kingdom. Right. But it's like, what if like the players should always have a choice in what they do and how they solve a quest. Right. Even if there's only a few different outcomes that should happen or could happen, like they should have those choices. Yeah. But I think it's a lot harder for, for DMs and campaigns especially pre-written ones to have that dynamic outcome where it's like oh we're supposed to save the kingdom but we kind of want to join the guys on this opposing faction and like enslave the kingdom right. um it's right. a lot harder because then you have to especially if you don't have it written down or planned out yeah so i, I think that's more along those lines is where it's harder to plan for if you want it to kind of go in this type of story, it's really hard to suddenly take that story and just diverge it completely the other direction for people in a lot of cases. I, I just I always had this idea that like even even when I was trying to put something together is that you kind of want your party to be the heroes of the story. Like that's that's the general sentiment that you have. So sometimes you'll uh, as as a a game master or dungeon master or storyteller you'll be kind of diverting the the attention or I, I guess kind of like moving your your attention towards the idea of purposefully designing elements that are that are going to take you down that path there aren't a ton of times at least not in my experience where people will kind of go this is the current situation of things so you're going to do anything about that or are you because the party could always technically just walk away, but the, but if they walk away, <laughs> it's always yeah. fun when you have a plot hook and the party walks away from it. Yeah. <laughs> I've definitely read stuff where people are like, oh yeah, you're going on a boat. And it's like, my guy's scared of the water. And then like that one character that you made for the game is just like, nope. But this is why you're like, your session zero is a thing. Yes. Yeah. It's because you, you, unless you have a very open-ended campaign, uh, and those are, I've run a couple of those, those are not necessarily fun to plan for, because it's like, all right, you have all these options, what do you want to do? Um, sure. Most parties, most players don't necessarily want to be given a blank slate like that. Sure. Because it's, they when you ask players what they want to do, here are your options abroad, here are your multitude of things you can go do. They're like, I don't really know what I want to do. I don't know what my char character wants to do. I don't know where I want to go. 
I, I guess I, I just always had that idea that you can give players a lot of options and that's fine. But usually in, in especially in the tabletop role playing setting, you you kind of assume that people are going to make some roads that you didn't even imagine they would go down. But you kind of always assume that they're going to be going down a path of being the good force in the world and not a force that's going to set everything on fire, even though, you know, a lot of times it does get set on fire. A lot of times there's a lot of fire. <laughs> there's a lot of fire. So that that actually brings me to the question of, does it make sense most of the time to be the good guy? You know, because that whole thing where you're selfless and you're giving of yourself and the money and everything, it it doesn't always make sense in the scenario that you've been given right you know uh i keep thinking to myself like even when i'm playing certain games uh if you if you were to take like a good karma path in like a jade empire or like the light side quests in in kotor any of those fable you can name them um when you play in those video games you're 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 giving of yourself and you're being the hero and you're doing the the good thing, but even then they kind of give you rewards for doing that. You know, there there are certain uh, abilities and and such that you get by being the good person rather than the bad person, right? And in some cases, even that can be renown or fame. Yep, yep. And it's not a it's not necessarily a tangible monetary or item type reward uh although a lot of times it's that as well because with doing these good things people are like for doing such a good deed we grant you this mansion sum of money a cloak of wonder 16 wishes and a brothel <laughs> right you know there's there's that whole thing like if you get into uh bioshock is, is a good example of that too like when you get to the little sisters, yeah, you you're gonna get a lot of Adam if you if you harvest little sisters. But if you if you don't, if you save them, you still get some. And oh, periodically, as you go along, the little sisters will now give you special gifts and abilities that you would not normally have in a Red Dead Redemption. If you become infinite infamous, you're gonna have a lot of trouble with the law. If you're if you're doing the right thing. Uh, you're not going to have trouble with the law as much. There's usually still some kind of net benefit to you in some way by doing what is essentially selfless, which always makes me wonder, is it actually selfless if you if you know if it's you're in your it? best interest if it makes things easier on you? Right, exactly. Or if you, so, so if one you know thing, it. Yeah. So I, I actually thought about this the other night while I was listening to a YouTube video at work, and it was... This is one of the many YouTube videos by Simon Whistler, oh, yeah. uh, because that is my life now. <laughs> the 50 um, channels of Simon Whistler. <laughs> yeah, 50 shades of Simon, um, <laughs> as it were. He was doing a promo for one of his other pieces of work, because again, 50 shades of Simon, yeah. that's going to be TM. <laughs> TM. We're going we're gonna to blaze that to him. Trace, no, <laughs> 50 shades of Simon um, again. <laughs> But um, he has a podcast called The Casual Criminalist. Oh. Um, I wasn't, I don't think I was listening to that. This is tangential to this. Okay. Um, but it might have been that. It was about serial killer fandoms. Oh. Okay. Like serial killer groupie type things. Yeah. Or, or that type of content. Where people are really enthralled by and like write letters to and get married to. All that stuff. Yeah. And I kind of came across the thought, this is totally tangential, but what if you have your party that's doing all of these things, but somebody takes hold of that and, like, starts sending them, like, letters, and, like, a courier finds them, like, oh, you've got a letter. It's a fan, as it were. Oh. But what if this person becomes, oops, sorry, obsessed with the party or a certain player uh character in the party that's doing something maybe they're uh it could be a an npc character like human or elf or maybe it's like a goblin and it's scrawled in some uh just really poorly written common sure for instance what if the party's going out clearing tons and tons and tons of goblin uh 
uh, boroughs, whatever they live in. Fuck. <laughs> Warren? But say... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but say, like, say they're slaughtering all these bugbears and goblins. Yeah. And there's, there's this, this one goblin that keeps noticing this and seeing it, and they're enthralled by this... <laughs> ever unleashing genocide of goblins that's going on by the party <laughs> but they're like enthralled by it and you kind of treat them like these people act with a serial killer type deal and you start giving them fan mail and they start showing up and like giving the party gifts or something like that yeah but then it turns out they're only doing that because they're like oh yeah they see you as absolute murderers yeah you do have to say like i i remember this from fable if anyone out there has ever played Fable, I'm sure you have. But there's this whole thing with the with the good and bad, like the good and evil points that you get for things. If you if you go and you go into a town and you start like just killing people in the town, you're gonna get evil points. Like you know that that's just the way it is. But then bandits. Okay, if you go and start just killing bandits, you get good points. But you imagine from the perspective of like a kid that was that, that was hanging out at the bandit camp. Right, like, like, like you're you're getting all this this attention for being the good guy, and everybody in your camp is getting slaughtered for it. There's definitely a perspective issue there. Yeah, like, and that's like, a whole other. Again, that's a whole other thing. Oh, that is a whole other thing. We might actually cover that in the second part because that's that is definitely a, a, a way of looking at things. Um, but the the general idea too is there might actually be some real consequence. Like we always think about there being some negative consequences for doing the bad thing. That doesn't necessarily mean that there can't be some bad consequences for doing the good thing. Oh, like, there can totally be yeah. terrible consequences for doing the uh, quote unquote good thing. The yeah. what is socially acceptable as the good thing. Here's here's an easy example for you. Imagine you're going into a town and the leader of the town, okay, your local governor or whatever, uh, says that I, I need you to go and take care of this uh, this this uh, group of uh, bandits or I, I need you to go and take care of we, we've got a, a, a roaming monster and, and he's going around and he's killing a bunch of uh, sheep. We can't have the sheep, the, the sheep eater around the the chupacabra basically is going around and and killing our livestock and and that's not good you need to do something about that and so your party thinks to themselves oh yeah we don't want that to happen we'll go out and we'll take care of the 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 chup the, the not chupacabra the faux chupacabra the El Macabra. The El Macabra. Okay, so good. And so they go out and you do that for the governor and, and, and the governor is really happy. But, you know, then later after you've done that thing and you think you've done your good job and you've saved the livestock and everything, you realize, like, one, the creature that you just killed was like an endangered creature. They didn't bother to tell you that. And also the governor had like sheep futures and, and and was not very good to his people and really just wanted to corner the sheep market. And, oh, yeah. And, and they also that that creature kept away the dire sheep that would slaughter all the you know townsfolk. You've destroyed the ecosystem basically by trying to do oh, this. There's You've destroyed it. an episode of Adventure Time. This one. OK, so basically there's this. This monster that's a bully, and they're these these townsfolk that are literal like buildings that are characters. Mm. So this guy's bullying all of them, and Finn, obviously being the hero here, takes the bully and like they're like they reform him, right? They make him an sure. upstanding fellow. And Jake, Jimmy, Jake is Jake. So, anyways, so they make him up and they go to the town. And it's like. Wait, what's going on? They're being attacked by these werewolves that are like librarian. I don't know. <laughs> but there's something I can't remember what they're called. Sorry. Um, but they're like really intelligent werewolves. Sure. Um, they might be aware wolves, I think. But they're like, oh yeah. So Billy was like a natural deterrent for us by bullying all of them. He had this aura of just like jerkiness. That kept us away. It's lethal to us werewolves. So by removing him, mm -hmm. you just took a part of this ecosystem, and now we're attacking all the villagers unbridled because there's nothing there to stop us now. Mm -hmm. So Finn's like, oh my god, we turned him into a good guy, but he, we need him to be a jerk, or else all these people are going to get slaughtered. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. like a really good episode, and I think it actually would do a really good job kind of explaining what we're talking about right this second. Right, right, absolutely. So just go yeah. watch that. You'll yeah, understand. just watch that instead of listening. Bye. Bye. See you. Okay, we'll be <laughs> we'll be here when you come back. But yeah, I, I feel like there's a lot of things where the party doesn't do a lot of research on whether the thing that they're doing that's good is necessary. But I but in that in that case, I think this actually kind of lends itself to the next question that I that I had, because it does feel like a lot of times those questions aren't really. We, we don't assume that players are going to ask a lot of those deeper questions about the ramifications. And so my my question here is, are players encouraged to be the traditionally good heroes in gaming? I think they are, especially by not, especially on their own accord, if they're not asking those deeper questions. Right, because if we ask those deeper questions, we would have a much more morally gray area... <laughs> That that would cause them to maybe not do the thing that we think that they're going to do. And and I personally love the morally gray areas when I'm uh, running a game. Mm. I like your position to not be completely clear. I like you having to question whether what you're doing is right or wrong, self-serving or better. We had that whole thing I think I've talked about before where we had these two old guys who had these two different opinions and they turned out to be ancient dragons mm -hmm. and one was a red ancient dragon the other is a gold ancient dragon they should oh, be boy. enemies but they are not um and their opinions and viewpoints had changed over like a millennia of of just living you know intertwined mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so were these old guys you know they're in polymorph they had like one of them was like yeah people are you know inherently good and the other's like people are inherently evil Mm -hmm. You would think the gold dragon would be like, yeah, people are inherently, you know, good. And the red dragon would be people are inherently evil because they're typically uh, gold is good and red is an evil alignment dragon. But we had them swapped because more interesting that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't, you assume a certain level about what's going on. But then if you pull back that and you kind of take the um, the plot and twist it, it's really interesting. Uh, I was I was going to say, it's sort of like that whole idea of, like, two deities sitting down and playing chess. You know, it's that, it's that whole thing, like, you know, they're going to, like, you, you have two beings of great power that are going to now philosophize about the nature of the universe and move pieces around on a chessboard that are essentially us, and it's very difficult at that point for you as a mortal to truly comprehend exactly the, the weight of decision-making on one end or another. Right. <laughs> as, as that goes. Another, I think, decent example here would probably be Batman. Yeah, because if you think, they've made the case, too, that if you look at, like, the Dark Knight, um, there's a lot of reason to think that the Joker was the hero of that. And that yeah. Batman, Batman actually as a force, not, not real like, essentially a, a, an authoritarian, like, police state dude. <laughs> like, you know, taking the law into his own hands, vigilante justice, working outside of the system, uh, you know? And and on the one side, you know, Batman, you know, Bruce Wayne is doing what he thinks is the good thing, the yeah. best for Gotham. Right. You know, he's cleaning up crime. He's getting rid of criminals. Mm. Um, and the police force is like, should we do something about him? Because he's kind of doing, like, a good job. And right. they're like, no, we shouldn't. But at the same time, like, he's operating outside of the jurisdiction of the law. Right. As well. Which right. makes him a criminal. Right. Right. Um. Right, but and then as you said, the Joker was, I think, game uh, film theorists actually did a whole thing on that. They did, yeah. Where it was, you know, Joker's the hero because before, you know, once he was doing what he was doing, crime deescalated, the mob was taken care of, and yeah. all of this stuff. And he like, the Joker helped cleaned up Gotham, right? Because, better than Batman. Yeah, because Batman's Batman's solution to taking care of like the uh, the cartel, I can't remember Falcone, the Falcone yes. crime family. Um, his his uh, try to try to catch them and then put them in jail, but there's still a lot of money there, so the family just keeps moving on. And the Joker's solution to that whole thing was, well, I'm just going to take their money. Now they have no money to to deal with. They don't have a reason to stay. That's how he gets rid of. And and that's why like when people were like, okay, so you stole the money just so that you could burn it. 
Why'd yeah. you do that? It's like because it's not about the money; it's about the message. It's yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> and, and and it it works. And then the other thing that people talk about a lot with Batman is, yeah, he's he's the hero of the story, but how much of it is escalation that causes all of the criminals that end up trying to come out so that they can defeat the Batman? <laughs> that's mm-hmm. what you get in the sec in, in the last part of the Nolan trilogy with like Bane. Like how how yeah. much of Bane is I want to break the bat his whole character is about oh yeah um so you can technically do the good thing as we imagine the good thing being but there's some gray area there (laughs) also batman works by nature of instilling fear in others yeah i think actually the batman works really well for this example uh in general here because uh the escalation thing yeah if you have your party Going out, doing all the good things, stopping criminals, killing monsters. Mm. They're going to be seen as, you know, potentially people like guards trust them and and townspeople look up to them or think they're a hero. But bad guys have a network, too. Yep. Like monsters allegedly talk. (laughs) Yeah. Criminals organize, you know. So if you're, you know, ogres are talking about like. Unless you wholesale slaughter whole towns and nobody escapes, but like if you're running a game, always have somebody escape to tell the message or something. Oh, always. something that they can figure it out from. Yeah. Criminals are going to organize against you just like they did against Batman. They escalate. Your heroes might be doing all this really good stuff, but there's going to come a time when there's going to come escalation for them, or there should come a time where all that goody goody is not so goody goody for you. <laughs> If you look at a lot of like those superhero team of you look at like when Justice League or Avengers happens and there's a lot of collateral damage in those scenarios <laughs> when you get around to it too. Uh, even if you're trying to do the right thing, you're bringing a, a war essentially to populated areas for that matter. <laughs> That's a problem. And and also the whole thing about, like, who is giving you the mission? Like, is, is it a local lord? Do they have an agenda? You don't necessarily... Or are you acting on your own? Did anyone authorize you to do this? You you might have the idea of, well, I, I don't need to be authorized. It's obviously the good thing or the bad thing. But somebody else might not actually see it that way. And um, like you were saying, how long until... You know, oh, well, we have this this group of the do-gooders that are out there trying to destroy all the monsters, and then Sauron's army comes down over the hills and yeah. says, we're destroying Helm's Deep. Sorry, folks. Yeah. And the Ents are like, no! <laughs> yeah. The Ents um, go to war, and they die. A lot of them die. Yeah. And on that note, too, like where you're saying, well, what's the maybe the Lord's got an agenda too? Mm. Uh, on another note, too, where we talked about the paladins, what if you were to use a something like divine intervention, for sure. instance? Yeah. But again, the plot twists are really nice when you take those tropes and turn them on their heads. So instead of your uh, your paladin's deity coming down in a vision to your paladin and saying that they need to go destroy the den of evil. Sure. Um, and it's located on Fourth and Main at this building, and it's a brothel or something, or it's a bar, or maybe it's just a tax house. You know, it's the den of evil. Sure. Doesn't matter what it is, but what if you flip that on its head, and it's not really divine intervention from their god or prophecy from them or a message from the god? What if it's somebody somewhere with power that is going? All right, well, I can fake it. Yeah, and it's you know an imposter. What if somebody's somebody found a way to make it seem like it's their deity talking to them and oh, told yeah. them to go do this evil thing for them? Yeah. Not only then would your paladin be like, "What have I done?" It would be their god would be displeased, and in a paladin specific sense, um, they would need to atone for that. That leads to a whole character arc in and of itself, even though you're it technically does. the good guy in this scenario. So You did what you thought was good. You were told it was a good thing to do. Personally, I always have paladins in general when I'm playing games, because um, they have to be lawful good, generally. Um, I make them... The rule for my paladins games is they are lawful, but they are lawful to their deity in their compass right so if your deity like you can be have a paladin of whatever god you want i don't care 
helm. If you have a, a god <laughs> that is chaotic evil, yeah. you are lawful to that code of conduct your god in there. And, and well, that makes sense. All of their stuff is. Yeah. So if like, yeah, my god likes to set fire to children. It's like, well, your <laughs> god would really love it if you set fire to children. <laughs> I guess I guess that kind of falls into the what do we consider to be good, like from a perspective standpoint. Right, and we can go into that later if you want, but I think yeah, personally for paladins, yeah. it's like if your god thinks spiders are kind of awesome and don't kill them ever, uh, and like killing people, like murder and thievery is good, then you murdering and thieving stuff might be good in the eyes of your deity, but right. it might be bad in the eyes of society. Sure, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but again, like, uh, kind of taking it back to that question about, like, are players encouraged to be the traditionally good heroes? I don't think for most people's campaigns, they really dig into the, like, are these decisions that the player is making uh, actually beneficial to the society as a whole? Uh, I, f I feel like it's mostly uh, go to take care of the evil thing that's out there trying to destroy the the planet evil the evil there's a giant evil thing folks and uh, yeah you can make the evil thing very complex and you can give it depth and you can give your good characters depth but there is always like kind of a general underlying uh, most of the time at least a general underlying idea that yeah you're on the right side of this they're on the wrong side of this and you gotta you gotta take them out and that's gonna be good everybody's gonna be happy and there will be much rejoicing um, An I, another thing you could do yeah. there too is you could have your players, uh, your party, on the right side or what the perceived uh, good side of the conflict is. Maybe they're fighting for their uh, country or mm -hmm. their lord. Mm -hmm. And then what if it's like a war? What if they're fighting on the side uh, or whatever? Or perhaps monsters overrun, just kill your lord and destroy the city. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And somebody else claims the land. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, you're insurgents. Yeah. Yeah. What if, what if your war is lost, and now you are seen as people that need to be hunted down? It's not that you necessarily were doing something bad, but now, because you are doing something good, mm. in the eyes of everything that you were doing, where you were doing it, it was considered good. But now the people in charge are like, mm -mm -mm, that's not good. You are opposing us. Yeah. You need to be taken out. Yeah. Um, unless you're mercenaries, which in that case, it's like, well, we just work for gold. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you if you just kind of go, well, like, hey, I go where the gold is. You're not necessarily good or bad. You're just working for a paycheck. <laughs> yeah. And then you and will be seen in another light entirely. As, absolutely. Um, absolutely. I feel like that's more or less the, the neutral path for a lot of people if you don't have any particular goal or objective or agenda you're just you're just there for the paycheck <laughs> i just yeah. i come in i do the job and i get paid and i'm happy with that i don't think most uh parties and rpgs do it just for the paycheck i was never under the impression whenever i'm playing games that i'm doing it for the paycheck at all even when that is kind of the precursor to go forward like in the in in, in our 1879 game you know, it starts off with each one of our players uh, being approached by this lord uh, to say that we have a mission for you and you will get compensated well for it. But there is a larger thing inside of that, that when I'm, when we're going to check all of these sites in, in like the middle of Caracas out in the jungles and... Uh, on the plains and in the middle of, of the U.S., that um, we're also doing a lot of research and solving crimes and mysteries along the way that we hope will be beneficial at least to the Lord that gave us the mission. But the whole overarching idea is, well, why did you go on the quest to begin with? It's a lucrative thing. <laughs> like, But do you, have you ever, in that game, have you questioned... Oh, from the very beginning, the motivations were a uh, suspect. the The whole notion of that particular game was that it starts in England. It's an alternate history. No one's familiar with like Earth Dawn and and that kind of thing. Eighteen seventy nine is like a period version of it. But basically, uh, there's this um, rabbit hole essentially that 
put a bunch of magic into the world that you know. So it's Earth, but now with magic. And some people get transformed into orcs and elves and... Uh, Earth in, plus. It's Earth plus. <laughs> it, it, it's Earth with benefits. And so the Earth with benefits is now has created a bunch of things here that are what we would refer to as supernatural, but is now just like stuff that they have to deal with. So they want to research these phenomenon. Uh, and so this government agent is basically saying that on behalf of the government, we would like your team to go down and uh, take a look at some of these step pyramids. And maybe there's this sphinx in a cage and a whole bunch of other things that are going on. And um, if you are like captured or killed or anything, we'll disavow all knowledge of you. Um, but, you know, you come back and you give us information and you turn over all of that to us, then we'll we'll give you a good stipend and, you know, cover your expenses for going uh, and then send you out on another mission. So, but obviously from that very setup, it does sound like there's some, some stuff going on behind the scenes that you're trying to uncover. I don't know how the party will react if we ever got to the point where it turned out that the people that we were working for... Uh, didn't necessarily have the best of intentions and if that would change whether we're going to keep working for a paycheck or if we are going to actually actively uh, uh, work against that but it does seem like every time we get onto an adventure our goal is to solve people's problems and uncover mysteries that are presented to us even though that's not necessarily why we're getting the money. <laughs> like, like we, we were asked to go and investigate a step pyramid in South America. Okay. Um, they just want to get an idea of what is there. They probably didn't ask us to search every room or try to translate a bunch of glyphs or have to fight a giant Tyrannosaurus thing. Those were kind of like supplemental. We did we did we did those in our free time essentially. Do you get paid extra for that? No. Hazard pay maybe. Uh, I I think we tried to make the case for it, but they gave us they were going to pay us fairly well for the time period anyway. Um, you know it's 1879, and I think we got we got money back for the expenses. And then we also got, like, I think it was, like, maybe 25 pounds for being... Uh, of course, we were away for a few months, but uh, expenses plus 25 pounds in that time. I mean, I was able to buy myself a workshop and get a few uh, laborers to help me work on stuff. So hey, there you go. So, yeah, it's like that ended up being, like, maybe four or five pounds a month, something like that. Plus, I get scrap, all kinds of scrap, so I can build my stupid inventions. Uh, so, hey, you know, it was lucrative for me. Essentially, that's rent on an entire, you know, workshop in downtown London for five months, you know. But, you know, when we go to the you know, the dinner party that we're asked to go to, uh, to the lords and ladies and everything, and um, it turns out that there are apparently a werewolf thing going on. All the normal. Yeah, our, our, our base reaction was never, uh, you know, just let that go. Yeah, yeah, just just let let it happen. No, it's to stop the people that are trying to get away with valuable information that could be detrimental. And, um, and we weren't getting paid for that. We were just getting a nice meal, which I guess is something. Um, I probably squirreled away one or two rolls. I'm not saying that I didn't steal a couple of the nice silverware forks while I was there. Evil. Hey, you know what? The, the, they're, they're not going to miss a couple forks, okay? I can use them to make some shock projectiles. I'm going to use them. But, you know, I was always under the impression, even though there's money involved, you're, we're, we're, we're not really there to just do bad things. We're there kind of to do the right thing. And then there will be money, even if we weren't doing that. Our our mission has always essentially been kind of neutral, um, investigatory stuff. So there isn't really a notion that you're going to do the the right thing or the wrong thing in that. Two, um, I'm trying to think when I was I was playing uh, Circle Stone when I was Rembrandt. Um, what was what was our motivation for that mission? Our our motivation was we were actually yeah we were securing funding for Circle Stone from some other towns, 
uh, and we were going around trying to do that because our our community is sort of more of an artist collective of sorts. Um, but we were securing funding for them. It's just that on our way back, we end up with a giant orc war we have to deal with, killing a lot of people. And we yeah, have those, to stop those them. Yeah, pop up from time to time. They pop up from time to time. And no one really told us that we had to try and free the ice dragon. Um, but we did. Or the dire wolf that was imprisoned. But we did, sure. you know. Uh, and yeah, that dire wolf came back and killed a few orcs for us. And so that was a net benefit. But, you know, <laughs> they, but but, you know, we didn't have any illusion that they were going to do that at the time. So generally, the idea was to do the right thing, even if your base mission was not necessarily that. But there was one other question that I wanted to ask before we finish up. And that is, is it less fun to be good than to be bad? <laughs> I think that depends on how you play your good characters. Now, I think if you were to play someone like Superman type, goody yeah. goody, Mister Always doing the right thing, mm. I think it would be less fun because right. it's you know I can do. It's not that you can do no wrong; it's that you actually do no wrong. You're you know Dragon Scout. <laughs> You're playing Dragon Scouts. <laughs> um. It's, it's, I think it's not less fun. I think it's less controversial. And I think sometimes controversy adds fun or conflict can add fun. And not right. in the fact that conflict and controversy themselves are fun as players to have um, or characters to have. I think it's that they offer you opportunities to create more fun and interesting outcomes. Yeah, I, I think the reason why people may automatically assume that it's not as much fun to be good is because a lot of times good characters are not given the kind of complexity or the the richness that sometimes they need to they're yeah. usually just kind of like the arbiters to do the right thing to yeah, stop i've definitely people. had a player in, in a game a ran who was a lawful good paladin um so it's like all right you're in this town you have a bit of free time what do you you want to do and when it came to the paladin they're like is there anyone who needs help? I'm like, no, it's a pretty nice town. There's not a lot of homeless people or anything like that. It's like, who can I go and benefit? Uh, it's like playing the super self. It's like all they wanted to do was try and like yeah, help people. It's like, dude, mm -hmm. nobody here. It's an idyllic town. You don't come across these very often, and it's fairly ritzy. Like, they have a lot of money, so they take care of their people. Yeah. It's like, it's not some rundown backwaters woods where everyone's got no teeth right right exactly <laughs> this is a, this is not that kind of place yeah i should have been like this person has no teeth they really need some teeth they really need some teeth can you go get some teeth for them give can him you go, your teeth can you go make some teeth for them and give him your teeth? own teeth out of your own mouth yeah can, um yeah exactly paladin might do it on, on a completely similar side note there um i've always wanted to have have you seen the movie Dragonheart? Uh, I think a long time ago. It's been a while. Do you know the premise? It's the knight is supposed to slay the dragon, ends up making a deal with the dragon. So the dragon keeps going to towns to, like, it's voiced by Sean Connery, by See, the way. See, that's dragons. the thing that I remember about Dragonheart, was that Sean Connery was a dragon. Yeah. yeah. So the dragon keeps going to these towns to attack them, and the knight keeps coming in, to save the town from the dragon and slay the dragon and making off like a bandit. Because, you know, I've always thought about like, what if like in the D&D &D or even RPG universe, like see it sometimes. I don't know how often you see it, but often uh, you see like there's not very many instances I'm aware of where a world has a lot of blight or plague or uh, pandemics since we're in 2021 um sure but you would think in a world like that those things shouldn't be very rampant where clerics and paladins and magical healing is abundant what if you were to go to a town that was everyone was sick and you have a single cleric in your party and they're like yeah i'll, I'll fucking heal all you guys mm -hmm. it's like just come all to me bless some water you know treat the sick heal wounds cure disease whatever and it's like Oh, you'd be seen as like the saviors, 
You could make a fucking racket out of that so easily. You got a druid? That's right. All right, I'm going to go poison this water supply up ahead. You guys come in three days from now, after like 20 people have died, and mm-hmm. cure the town, and like yeah. become heroes. It's like you could easily create that as a racket if you wanted a morally gray party. I mean, that's not even morally gray. That's like straight up probably chaotic evil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's like you could easily do that kind of thing in a D&D game where it's right. like because you don't in a single cleric or a single paladin of high enough level in a game setting like that in a world setting like that can be extremely powerful in that setting not because they're like super com- combat effective but because they like yeah by the power of my god i heal all of your sick so unless you in the game find a way to necessarily mitigate that Mm. you can just run away with that yeah like i see no reason you couldn't get a cleric to be ordained as a saint if you had that type of shit going on Mm -hmm. and like just so abysmally rich (laughs) yeah yeah that's like that's a racket yeah (laughs) why do i want to go do missions for a lord i can become a lord yeah any and it's like you hire thugs. Anytime an investigator comes to see what's going on, you have him murdered. Yeah, <laughs> or just pay him off. Who cares? Yeah, I, I I think that's the other side of the coin. That's you're 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 you've definitely reached in and ended up on on a a whole other. But until you do a lot of soul searching and ask yourself that it's the are we the baddies conversation, you know. <laughs> At that point, um, yeah. I uh I I don't know. I think it's mostly the idea that you know good characters in terms of being less fun. Uh, it it good characters can be tons of fun. Uh, I think it's just a matter of they're not usually as richly drawn out as right. the villains, which is um, and why it, it's why they they ask a lot of actors like why you want to be the villain in this. It's like because the villain's more interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Cause, cause and I think uh, I think well. in the next one. We can actually get into using good characters as the bad guy. Ah, uh, yes. It's a thing we can get into if you want to on the next episode. Also, I know uh, James... Was it James? Uh, James yes. had asked before, I believe, how do you make bad guys good? Okay, like, it might have been James, yeah. I think it was James. James, if it was you, let us know. If it wasn't James, you let us know. I'm too lazy to look back in the chat while we're recording. um but essentially it was uh and and i think we should um do an episode of that some point here where we address uh talking about making notable villains Mm -hmm. um or notable big bad evil guys or whatever you want to call them uh antagonists as it were Mm -hmm. um there is a lot there that we could unpack oh yeah and and i definitely have a uh, a question I want to ask you about that, and you can, and uh, anyone listening too, I would like you to think about your favorite villain mm-hmm. in all of media, mm-hmm. be it gaming, film, books, don't care what it is. We want to know who is your favorite villain and what about them makes them stand out to you. And if you have an answer to that, like send it to us on Twitter or uh, our Discord. Um, I know Tabletop Salt and Seago are really great about doing that stuff in Discord. The other guys, you guys are great too, and gals. Yep, yep. Um, you're pretty good at that uh, when we ask pointed questions. So we um, appreciate it, yeah. Uh, but yeah, if you want us to do, to do that episode on uh, notable villains, yeah, uh, let us know what villains you really love. I have an answer for this question I'm not going to share right now. Yeah, and I probably have a good answer for it too, but we'll uh, we'll, we'll save that. We'll save it. We'll do a vi- we'll do a villain episode at some point. Maybe we should do uh, the good ep- good guy episode, the bad guy episode, and then the notable villain episode. If- we'll see what time has in store for us. We'll, we'll see. We'll you see. you want to do good, bad, and then ugly? Yeah. <laughs> and it's do- just going to be a picture of us on the album. <laughs> it's just going to be that picture of us at the reunion. Oh my God. <laughs> the ugly episode. Welcome to hell, folks. It's just going to be the colors inverted, so it's even worse. Oh, yeah, I could totally do a color inversion. That would be great. Uh, we mirror universe us. That's good. Yeah. Um, anyway. Bizarro, Nathan! Oh, God, no one wants He's to He's just that. socially normal. 
Jesus. Uh, well, I think that's a great way to lead into the bad conversation. But first of all, we should probably end this episode. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all for uh, listening. And uh, yes, we are looking for notable villains. Uh, you have a little bit of time. Uh, we can uh, do an episode about that. But we are wondering who you liked. And I would also be interested to know uh, if you have any good stories about the bad guy becoming the good guy. Because uh, I'm sure... No using some. Mastermind as your... Example. I mean, you can't actually use. It, I'm just saying. You could. Mastermind was a, a decent movie where that exactly that Mas- exact thing. Mastermind yeah, was a good one. Yeah, yeah, that, that that was actually a good movie. Uh, surprisingly enough, um, but uh, but anyway, if uh, you want to get all of the good gaming news that's out there, uh, Alex, where could they go on the internet? Somewhere else. Yep, they could go somewhere else. <laughs> don't don't go to our site. You can, you can go to delvcast.com, uh, where we've got all of our episodes, Nathan's uh, gaming attempts, as it were. Everything we do is over up on that site there. That's right. And Citanium Mine and all of our articles and everything, it's, it's there. Uh, you can check, click on our Patreon banner. You can uh, check out some of the benefits of becoming a patron. Uh, by the way, thank you to our shiny level uh, patron, Bonnie Ainsworth. Thank you for keeping the digital lights on. And thank you to Drunk Paul, of course, for helping us with our Discord channel. Um, you can also find us on the, uh, what do you call it? Those social media things. I think we're on sure. the social media. We use those once in a while. Once in a while. If you, you add us, we definitely use them. Yes, if you add us, we definitely use them. Uh, I am at Citanium. I am at EXP Limited, and our show is at Dell Podcast. And uh, you can always ask us questions over there. If you happen to be on our Discord, you can ask us there. Uh, but we would be very interested to know about your feedback for this episode and any other that you might be listening to. Um, and with that, I suppose we have to prep ourselves, or gird our loins, so to speak, so that we can get ready for what happens we have to raid the pantry. We have to raid the pantry because I, th- I think I think we're going to be raiding a whole lot of pantries of the less fortunate <laughs> next episode. Because <laughs> uh, we're going to go we're 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 going to be bad company next, folks. We're we're going down that road until oh, we yes. get there. Until we get there. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you on the next episode. Bye, everybody. Bye.